Okay, welcome back. I want to look at another question where sitting can be told to stay the principles of deformed government. Imagine they are only three. And if I the student being asked and then if they wonder east, west, north, south, try to look at them. The principles, these are the rules that are governing deformed government. So the devolution is based on three main principles. Number one. The county government is based on democratic principles and separation of power. That's why I say each uh, county, they are given their powers. They are given uh, the mandate to conduct their day-to-day -day activities without the central government controlling them. Okay, that is principle number one, whereby it is based on democratic. When I say it's based on democratic, it means that uh, it's through elections that people they get to those powers. You are not, we don't have monarchy whereby the county governor will be appointed from a certain family. No, we don't have such. So after every five years, we do conduct general elections. Uh, whereby we even uh, elect the county governors and the MCAs. The principle number two is the county governments shall have reliable source of revenue to enable them govern and deliver services effectively. When I talk about reliable source of revenue, that's why now some ask me the question, how some of these counties, where will they get reliable? They have to come up to create ways of get, get, getting money, ways of raising revenue. You know, the 15% that they're getting from the national kitty, it is not enough. Look at the country like Mombasa. They have so many services that they're supposed to offer. They were told to take care of the national school, take care of the polytechnic, take care of the KMTC, take care of the nurses. You find all these departments they need the money and that little money they are given, it cannot be able to be, it cannot be enough. And therefore they are supposed to raise their own money. How do they raise their own money? For example, a country like Mombasa, we have markets. Okay? And those markets you are supposed to pay something before you get in. If you are going to do business, if you are selling something. Look at the shops, they need the license. Those licenses you pay them in there the municipal, look at the tuk to which are operating in Mombasa, they pay some charges to the county government. Look at the motorcycle, the drivers, they pay something we call the toll. So all these are some of the sources. So each county is supposed to come up with their own way of raising revenue. That's why you go to some county, because they are farmers, they come up with some land rates where the farmers are supposed to pay them in order to raise the capital of that county. And principle number three is that not more than two-thirds of the members of the representative body in each county government shall be of the same gender. That means if two-thirds are men, one-third must be women. Okay? And that's why you find when they are nominating MCAs, if the men are so many, they have to nominate so many women to cater for their deficit so that they can have at least a quarter uh, at that who are women. So this is a common question in section A, in section C of our, in section C, that's number 23 and number 24 of paper 1. Okay? Another thing there that I want also to mention, decentralization has four main dimensions. When you talk about decentralization, what are they decentralizing? Okay? One, they decentralize administrative, they decentralize political, physical, and economic. So I want to discuss the four before our time is up. So when we talk about uh, administration decentralization, this refers to the transfer of responsibility for planning, financing, and management of certain public function to the county government. For example, uh, they have to manage their finances and the like. Okay? 
political decentralization means that this is the sharing of political power among the three arms of government, that is the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, as well as sharing power between the national and the regional, the regional government. So here you find this where they are sharing power. So when you are appointing, when the central government is appointing, they have to put into consideration they have how many counties? 47. Not to have all the ministers coming from central. That will be not that will not be good. The other one is physical uh, decentralization. And when we talk about physical decentralization, this refers to the transfer of financial resources from the central government to the self-governing local agencies. And this entail direct transfer from the national level to the local agencies, or giving up the power to tax people to the regional and the local units. Where you find now the counties, they are given the power to charge licenses to the business owners. They are given power to take money from the national schools and the like. Then the closely related to physical decentralization is the economic or market decentralization where the government gives the responsibility to private bodies which offer services and levy charges for them. So physical decentralization mostly accompanies administrative and political decentralization. So that is the way the government decentralizes uh, and th that's how the decentralization has occurred. So I've talked about political, administrative, and finally I've talked about the economic decentralization. So decentralization normally uh, takes four forms, devolution, uh, deconcentration, delegation, and privatization. So you need to know the meaning of those Forwards. Remember, this is revision because we have already covered them. That's why I'm moving a bit faster without a uh, lot of uh, do there and there. So when we talk about devolution, I say devolution here is responsibility for the services are uh, transferred to the local government that elect their own officials, raise their own revenue, and have independent authority to make investigation, uh, make investment decision, regional and local units are uh, political, administrative and physical power with the le uh, legally recognized boundaries. However, these units are not separate bodies but corporate bodies. When we talk about privatization, it means or it encompasses economic and market decentralization dimension. This can entail complete transfer of provision of goods and services to free operation of the market and public private partnership where you find the private sector corporate, uh, uh, corporate to provide services. So you find the government cannot be able to own everything. Some of them they are under the private sector. And finally, uh, we have the deconcentration. This takes place when a national government office transfers responsibilities uh, to the few officers who is fully accountable to the national office. So this is because in unitary government, the field office has no power to act on its own but must comply with the terms of reverence set by the central government and delegations and it means that the transfer of both administrative and fiscal powers to the regional and the local uh, and the local government for semi-autonomous bodies such as the parastatals the private sectors and NGOs. So this manage the provision of goods and services on behalf of the government. So those are some of the key words that you may find in an exam that you need to explain and understand them better. Having said that, I think I can call it a day and we meet in our next exercise 
where I'll be defacing another question still on the fourth government. Have a good day.